Hey everyone, um, not too long ago I made a tutorial on how to create a really basic save system using any files, and I mentioned in that that you can use a system similar to that to save like entire levels. So I figured I may as well show you how to do that. Okay, so again, I'm just going to be walking you through the code in this one because it gets complicated and yeah, it's just easy to just walk through working code. Okay, so to start off, um, I've set up three objects for saving. So there's three sprites here. So we've got uh, sprite zero, which is just a red ball. Then you've also got a green ball and a blue ball, which is basically the same thing. Okay, now I've created three separate objects for that. So there's first, and second, and the third and then I parented those objects to object save object so this just makes saving easier okay so as you can see in this one it's parented to object save object so just like that and then that's just the same with the other one so parented and parented there okay so we'll take you into object control all this is is a step event so this is it. So first one is mouse check of mouse check button pressed. Um, create instance at the mouse x, mouse y, and object zero. Pretty much the same for object one and object two, except for object two we use the right mouse button, and no, sorry, object one we use the right mouse button, and object two we use the middle mouse button. And then we've got the actual saving, which is done through two scripts, which I'll take you through soon. But yeah, that. All that there is just creating the object, so just nice and simple stuff. Okay, now I'll take you through the scripts. Okay, so in here, you can see when we press S, it runs the save script, just there. And when we press L, it runs the load script. So, I'll start off by showing you the save script, and uh, this one is, or can be complicated. Okay, so this is it here. It's not a big script, but it can be hard to understand. Okay, so to start off, we set one, two, three, four, five variables. Okay, file is used just here to get the file name and directory that we want to save the game in. Inst num or instance number, which I've shortened it to, is to get the amount of objects there are to save. N zero is for creating our keys in the any file so you've got three um, things you need like three arguments you need for using any file so the first one is the section the second one is the key which we use n0 for and the third one is the actual value so yeah I'll take you through that soon so n0 is for the key and m1 is also for the key and then inst is for getting the actual instance that we're saving. So we run through the objects one by one as we save them, just using a while loop. Okay, so first things first is we use file equals get save file name, and our first argument, which is the filter, is just the little asterisk dot asterisk. Now this means it can be any file name with any extension. Okay, um, and then save.ini is just default text that shows up as a file name, but you can change that anyway. Okay, um, for overriding, we use if file exists file, which is now set because we just got the file name. Um, if it exists, then delete that one, and then I'll run through the rest of it. Okay, so once we've like either overrided it or we've just started making a new one. Okay. We go any open and that creates the file if it doesn't already exist. If it does exist, normally it would go into that file and like just change values, but in this case it won't do that because just here we delete the file if it does exist. So in this case it's always going to create a new one. Okay, here's inst num here. So inst num equals instance number object save object. Now remembering that we're parented our three objects to that object so it just as I said makes saving easier okay n0 equals 0 and n1 equals 0 okay now while inst number is higher than 0 then inst equals instance find now instance find you can use to find an instance 
like yeah, yeah, just find an instance of whatever object you put in for this argument here, in which case we've used object save object and the number is instance num minus one. Okay, um minus one I can't really explain why I do that. Um it hang on, um it for some reason oh wait. Yeah, um I think it's because when Gamega like counts it starts off at zero and not one. So because of that we've got a minus one to set the number that it brings back like back to the right thing. Now I don't know if that's it for sure, I can't really remember why. But yeah, just do it. Um do you get try not doing it and see what happens, but yeah. Okay, so any right reel, um our section is save and then this is where our key comes in. So as you can see I've used and string and zero which is set to zero and string and one which is also set to zero up here. Okay, so it's string and zero plus string and one. So what that is going to do in this one is set the key as zero zero. So just two zeros. And then ints dot object index. Now that saves the object index, so I'm pretty sure for that object it's one or zero. Uh, it might be zero. Anyway, it just saves the object in index, so that way when we load, we know what object we want to load. Okay, um, then n1 plus equals 1. So then after that, it's any right reel, save again, and the same for the key, but this time, instead of the key being 0, 0, it's 0, 1. Because n0 is still equals 0, but n1, we just added 1, 2, so that makes it n1. Okay, and then we save the x value to that, and then it's basically the same thing for y, but we've added 1 to n1 as well, so this time it'll be n2. So, no, sorry, not n2, um, 0, 2. So that's basically how we keep track of our objects and the different variables for them. So n0 pretty much stores, like, what object number we're up to, so in this case object 0, and then it's 0 for the first argument, 1 for the second, and 2 for the third. Um, yeah. Okay, so then instance number, or inst num, minus equals 1. So that's going to make it so we don't get stuck in a loop. And then n0 plus equals 1, and m1 equals 0. So that means in the next loop, instead of being, like, in this first any right rail, you see instead of n0 being 0, n0 will be 1, but n1 will be 0 again. So you're pretty much just resetting it but adding 1 to our object index. I'll show you the save file. Okay, and after that, any close, and just to make sure that it's saved, it's any fi if file exists, show message async, and then just saved. Okay, now for our load script. It's generally the same kind of thing, so variables is file, n0 and m1 for the key, instance for the instance that we're loading, xx and yy for its x and y value. Okay, so file get open file name, that allows you to choose the file that you're opening. And after that, we open any file, um, just set some variables to default, so pretty much just sets all the variables to zero. Okay. Now, while any key exists, okay, so what this does is it checks, like, if the key in the any file exists, okay, so our section is key, um, save, and then the key is n0 plus n1 again, remembering that we are, like, adding values to this in the while loop, so as soon as it, like, reaches a key that doesn't exist, it'll just stop the loop and, uh, like, level will be loaded. Okay, so first up, um, inst, which stands for instance, equals any read real. Save uh, the key, which is n0 plus n1, or 0, 0, it'll be written out at. The default value is 0. So remembering that this first value that we save for each object is the object index. Okay, so saving that to inst just sets the index to inst. Okay. And it's pretty much just running through generally the same thing. So xx, we load the x value. yy, we load the y value. 
Then after that's done, we create the instance, so xx being the x value, yy being the y value, and then inst being the object index. Okay, so then we set n0, um, we add n 1 to n0, and set n1 back to 0. Okay, so then we just close the in file, and that is it. So now I'll just show you how it's done. Okay, here we are. It's just a blank screen. So I'm going to left click to create object zero. So I'm just going to draw something out. So just do kind of an N there. And I'll do a T with the second object. And then I'll just draw like a happy face. Like that. Okay. So then we press S, and we get a little save file box here. Okay, so I'm going to save mine to the desktop, as you can see up here. Okay, so I just hit save as the default name, so it's just save file dot any. So I hit save on that. Hang on a sec. Um. All right, hit yes. Okay, and it's saved. So we can X this away. And then I'll show you the actual ini file. So if we come over here, open that up, and here is the save file. Okay, so going right down to the bottom, as you can see, so n1, um, n0 plus n1 is just 0, 0, and then n0 plus n1 again is 0, 1, n0 plus n1 again is 0, 2. So then, as you can see, and 1 being the second value gets reset back to 0 and n0 being the first value gets added onto so this here is our first object this here is our second this is our third this is our fourth and so on way up the list so obviously the more objects you have the bigger the file so doing it this way it's good because it keeps save files at a like low size so in this case it's only two kilobytes for that so yeah it's a nice small size okay so now we'll just run it again and then we're going to hit L to load it go up here go down a bit and there's a file there open that and there you go it's loaded so same positions same objects and that's it okay I ho hope this helps some people out uh, probably did I know I had trouble doing this at first until I worked that out but yeah um, if you want more tutorials feel free to subscribe if you need any help with anything please make suggestions or send me a message or something. If you don't want a tutorial made, I'm still happy to help you out. Okay, so obviously making tutorials is better because it allows me to have things to make. At the moment I'm just making whatever. But yeah, if you need any help, send me a message, comment on the video or something, um, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And yeah, I uh, hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching.